Your Excellencies, honored guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen, last year I addressed this August Assembly proclaiming that we must take bold and alternative action today to secure tomorrow. As our land disappears, we have no choice but to become the world's first digital nation. Our land, our ocean, our culture are the most precious assets of our people. And to keep them safe from harm, no matter what happens in the physical world, we'll move them to the cloud. Since COP26, the world has not acted, and so we in the Pacific have had to act. We have seen temperature rise projections remain well above 1.5 degrees Celsius, foretelling the imminent disappearance of islets like this one. Piece by piece, we'll preserve our country, provide solace to our people, and remind our children and our grandchildren what our home once was. Our digital nation will provide an online presence that can replace our physical presence and allow us to continue to function as a state. Global action must be taken to provide the best case scenario, but we in the Pacific are planning and preparing for a worst case scenario. We need to be able to secure our statehood, our maritime boundaries and our endowments, no matter what happens in the future. It is not just Tuvalu that is affected, but without a global conscience and a global commitment to our shared well-being, we may soon find the rest of the world joining us online as their lands disappear. It has long been the time for action, but we have not stepped up to the challenge. We must start doing so today. Otherwise, within a lifetime, Tuvalu will only exist here. Paftailasi, Tuvalu Mateatua. My name is Tanya and I'm 11 years old. My name is Ala, 12. My name is Kine, I am 13. My name is Fayu and I'm 15 years old. Um, I'm turning 16 of on August, mm -hmm. and my name is Tia So I might want to be a nurse or a doctor. I want to be a doctor. I was thinking of being a lawyer, then give my money to the government to help support to work. Um, I like to be become a vet. A uh, climate warrior. A climate warrior? Yeah. I've seen climate changes around here in Tuvalu. Uh, sea level rise due to the Greenhouse gas. Before, when I was young, I can see the sea very far, but now I, when I go to the beach, it's very near. For me, tomorrow's future, if we all put our hands together to help our dear country, Tuvalu, I think it will end well. But if we are careless, we won't be able to. It will not look that good. Mm -hmm. In the future, I know that Tuvalu is sinking, mm -hmm. but I know I can change so that Tuvalu cannot sink in the future. Have you heard of the government's plan for digital sovereignty? Yes, I have. Mm -hmm. What do you think? I think it's going to be interesting, but it's, it's sad because it's, we're not going to be seeing our island anymore. And the fact that we have to see it online, it's, it's unfortunate. Yes, we might have to leave Tuvalu. How does that make you feel? Uh, it makes me sad because Tuvalu is my home. I've lived here for such a long time. And if Tuvalu is gone, then we can't come back here. No one can bring it back. I'm Renaya and I'm 26 years of age. I'm Mr. Pele and I'm 29 years old. And is climate change caused by God, by man, by nature? <laughs> oh, most definitely us. us. Have you heard of the government's plan of a virtual Tuvalu and uploading everything onto the cloud? Definitely. Yep. <laughs> what does that make you feel? Um, I think it makes me proud to be a Pacific Islander and seeing that I've uh, been part of Tuvalu at this point. Uh, well, for me, the first time I heard about it, I was like, that's such a genius idea, you know? Um, and I was actually, just like what she said, I was. I am still like proud of that they, um, our leaders initiated like, you know, that kind of backup plan. It's to me like the thinking of the worst case scenario. That's the worst case scenario. Although we don't want our land, you know, it's not like we're saying we're giving up or, or that. But to me, it's, uh, it's always good to be prepared for the worst. But it's just sad to think that we have to do that. You know, we have to digitize our nation because it might not be here, like, you know, in the future, so, yeah. If you exclude Vatican City, 
Tuvalu is either the smallest or the second smallest country in the world by population. And the climate change impact is put into sharp focus in Tuvalu when you realise through most of the country you can throw a stone from one coast to the other. It's only when you come here and see that the entire width of the country can be captured in one photograph that you realise how vulnerable to climate change this country is. Here in Tuvalu there's nowhere to run. Land reclamation projects like this one are part of an increasingly desperate but hopefully not futile attempt to save the physical land of the country. For this country the threat is existential. They are genuinely planning for what happens when the country ceases to physically exist. But how can a country exist without a landmass? Well let's look at this financially for a second. The three biggest foreign income earners for the people of Tuvalu are revenue earned from the Tuvalu Trust Fund, that's not reliant on physical territory, fishing rights not reliant on physical territory and 20 to 25 percent of their foreign revenue comes from the license fee for the .tv domain name. The virtual sovereignty of which they speak is not a joke. The digital sovereignty is actually demanding a whole series of international agreements to preserve the exclusive economic zone and the maritime boundaries of Tuvalu even when the country sinks. And at first you think who's going to agree to that and then you realize who's not. Which country wants to agree to the shrinking of its exclusive economic zone just because its sea levels rise and its coastline shrinks. Australia and Tuvalu have now come to an agreement that Tuvaluans can get up to two to 300 visas a year for permanent migration to Australia, which is enough over the next 40 years for every Tuvaluan to move to Australia if they want. To put that in perspective, a young person of 14 or 15 today will be in 40 years younger than I am today. So it's not that far. So maybe we should hear from some of the kids. And do you ever play online games like Fortnite and build artificial countries? Used to, but yeah. nine more. Yeah. And how do you feel the difference between building an artificial country and keeping the memories of a real country online? Kind of the same, but for me, in real life, it's much important. Even when you lose the game and you lose everything else, you get angry. But in the game, you can try again. But here, in life, reality, you cannot try again. Once the while is lost, it's lost. You stop. Just stop doing what is causing climate change, because I don't want to lose to Valo. And how do you feel if one day you had to move to Australia or New Zealand because of climate change? I feel sad. And if Tuvalu goes underwater, where will you live? Nowhere. Nowhere. You just keep swimming. <laughs> I'll die. Mm. Hopefully you won't die. What about moving to Australia or New Zealand? How would that make you feel? No, I can't go there. Why? Tuvalu is my country. Home is always home, yeah? <laughs> Think first before you do anything that could uh, destroy or um, damage other people's environment. The main thing I want to say to people is for them to care. Because without care, we can't do anything. It's very, it's very sad because like growing up here, you get used to the traditions and the way of living here. Like, because the way of living here is very different from foreign countries. So it's, it's going to be very, very, yeah, it's just gonna be different. I grow here. Um, I was here when I was young, and Tuvalu is like my mother. <laughs>